Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trend 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is Monday morning. Only two days, eight hours, seven minutes, six seconds, and five, four, three, two, one. It'll actually be spring here on Wednesday at about uh, almost six o'clock Eastern time here on the East Coast. So again, uh, winter is almost officially over. Another way we can tell that winter's almost over is you can see the UV index is starting to get the higher numbers moving into the north of the equator and uh, south is starting to see less of that high UV indexes. We're already starting to see some here in the states, some uh, four, five, six indexes uh, getting up into the northeast. Again, that's a pretty strong sun, about equivalent to the, what you'd expect in uh, early September. Uh, looking at the uh, this week outlook across the world, again, um, Canada is getting really, really warm uh, for this time of year relative to Canada, of course. Um, still the cold spots uh, in the across the world is in the southeastern U.S. Um, parts of eastern Siberia, but again, much, maybe Argentina, but most of the rest of the, the world is on the, the warmer side here. If we zoom in here to the United States, uh, we can see that, uh, again, that cooler weather in the southeastern U.S. We're going to have a warming trend as we get toward the weekend in the east, uh, but for the week overall, for the nation as a whole here, we'd say it's a little bit warmer than last year, but still 13th coldest in 30 years, again, due to that cold across the south and the east. Um, driest in five years, haven't said that in a long, long time third dries in 30 years again haven't said that in almost eternity um, so it's a really dry week um, again wet in parts of the central u.s but again for the nation as a whole on the dry side and the less snow than last year and second least in 30 years uh, we'll zoom into uh, next week here the last week of march uh, again here you can see the big warm-up warmer than last year and eighth warmest in 30 years so much of the eastern two-thirds of the country uh, very warm um, the bad news about all that warm weather up in the dakotas is there's a heavy snowpack uh, that's going to lead to pretty major continued uh, river flooding as that snowpack melts up in the North Dakota region. So getting too warm too quickly is not a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, we go back to the wet pattern and probably severe pattern uh, here next week. Uh, have to look out for Texas, Oklahoma and the typical Tornado Alley areas and then a uh, secondary area in the Tennessee Valley and even the East Coast. So could be a stormy week. Uh, overall, we'd say the number one wettest. But the good news, I guess, is the least snow in seven years nationally. Uh, zoom out a bit here to the world overall. Again, we can see uh, much of uh, North America is on the warm side. Cools off in Eastern Europe, Eastern Siberia, parts of North Africa. Still kind of cool in Argentina. If we um, look at the um, one of the drivers here this spring summer is going to be the the weak El Nino. These are ocean temperatures versus uh, average. Again, so we see that weak El Nino out in the Central Pacific. Uh, also see those cold waters off Africa. That'll play a role here. Both will play a role actually in the hurricane season outlook that we'll issue here in, in a couple weeks. These are the water temperatures versus last year, and again, you can see the, the much, much warmer conditions compared to a year ago across the equatorial Pacific. So we've gone from a weak La Nina to uh, an El Nino type pattern here. Uh, this graphic does show again on the left here how we El Nino trend. We went from the, the very, very strong El Nino back in 2016, but that, that El Nino actually collapsed during the summer season. So this one's a little unusual in the sense that we're going to be actually seeing an increasing El Nino during the summer season here, um, peaking in the core of the summer july august time frame uh, right now most of the model guidance there on the right shows we definitely get up into the moderate category of el nino now one plus for that is it tends to create a lot of wind shear across the pacific which then translates into the atlantic ocean uh, and that definitely suppresses the the hurricane season outlook so we're actually going to probably just a hint of what we're going to be predicting here but uh, hinting with a, a below average season again not to say that there won't be some impacts to the u.s but uh, a below average season and um, probably nothing as catastrophic as we saw last year um, one thing that is catastrophic right now is the soil moisture just kind of off the charts here in the states, um, even parts of uh, parts of Europe. Um, so we'll zoom in here in a second here to the U.S. to see some of that extremely wet. Anytime, you know, obviously soil moisture, you can't have 100% soil moisture because you got dirt and rock and everything else in the ground. But you get up in the 40, 45% range as we have in the Midwest, that's a lot of moisture in the ground and unfortunately leading to uh, some pretty catastrophic flooding. The other factor here is just the snowpack here this morning. We still have two, three feet of snow up in that Dakota area in Minnesota. Again, very detrimental with that big warm-up next week. So they're already having massive, as you read headline news here in parts of Nebraska. Uh, with that snow melt, we're going to actually compound these river issues. Uh, so Missouri River, Mississippi River are the two biggest ones. We can zoom into some of these NOAA sites here. Uh, actually, the chart on the left is from Weather Trend 360 here. But... Uh, flood warnings up and down those rivers. So this is a river flooding event. Um, you just had too much snow and saturated soils and there's no place for this water to go. So if you live anywhere along those Missouri, uh, Mississippi, even Ohio rivers, um, definitely got some flooding threats here. We have about 280 total gauges here, according to NOAA this morning, that are in flood stage. Again, so uh, God bless you folks. Uh, stay safe. Again, unfortunately, probably uh, at least a few more weeks of this uh, as the snowpack begins to melt. Again, with WeatherTrends360.com, obviously for folks that are just on YouTube here, but uh, we have uh, everything and anything weather, no matter how you would like to slice and dice the weather. 
uh, at least our clients can uh, trans transpose this to any format charts data tables maps uh, so we try to give you the world view here um, I'll end on a personal note again we um, took uh, Mrs. Captain Kirk and the little Angelina Kirk up to their trying to find warm weather um, in the Poconos but uh, found an indoor water park and uh, actually had a great time here for the five-year anniversary um, all about the little one and the slides uh, this girl is like her, her daddy part Hawaiian I think uh, having grown up in Hawaii as a kid uh, she's definitely got the water bug so uh, this is her favorite thing on earth to do it is anything and everything uh, water so, um, we actually explored this resort and didn't even never been there a couple times and didn't even realize they had this huge wave pool which was obviously a hit with the, the little one watching the, the big waves and then she realized the, the power of buoyancy and uh, was able to uh, do her push-ups so that was kind of hysterical to, to watch her do that and so uh, with that she had a good night and uh, with that folks have a great week and we will be here this time next week